Have you ever wondered how to capture stunning time lapses or mesmerizing star trails with your Nikon Z series camera? What if I told you there's a powerful feature hidden in your camera that can do just that, but most users barely scratch the surface of its potential? In this video, we're diving deep into the interval timer shooting, a game-changing tool that could transform the way that you shoot. Whether you're just getting started or looking to fine-tune your skills, stay tuned to unlock the secrets behind mastering this incredible feature. Interval Timer Shooting is a built-in tool that allows you to automatically capture a series of images over a set period of time. Think of it as a way to program your camera to take photos at regular intervals without you having to press the shutter each time. This feature is essential for creating time-lapse sequences, capturing star trails, or documenting anything that changes gradually over time. Here's how it works. You start by setting the interval, which is the time between each shot, and then decide how many shots you want the camera to take. Once you hit start, the camera does all the work. For example, you might set an interval of 5 seconds and capture 300 shots over the course of 25 minutes. The result? A stunning time-lapse video or a series of stills that you can stack to create artistic effects like star trails. What's great is that all Nikon Z mirrorless cameras offer this feature, so whether you're using a Z9 or a Z30, you have access to the same powerful tool. You can choose to start the interval timer immediately or set a delay if you want to give yourself some time to get everything else ready. Plus, the cameras are smart enough to calculate and display the total shooting time based on your settings, so you know exactly what to expect. Let's take a look at some applications for this setting, starting with astrophotography. One of the most mesmerizing applications of interval timer shooting is capturing star trails. By setting your camera to take hundreds or even thousands of exposures over several hours, you can stitch them together to reveal the Earth's rotation, creating those iconic sweeping arcs of light across the sky. Without interval timer shooting, capturing this phenomenon with the same level of detail would be nearly impossible. Another fantastic use is documenting the gradual changes in light during a sunrise or sunset. As the sun moves across the horizon, the light and the colors in the sky change dramatically, from deep blues to warm oranges and pinks. By using interval timer shooting, you can capture every moment of this transition. When you combine the images into a time lapse, you get to relive the entire process in just a few seconds. But it's not just natural scenes where interval timer shooting shines. Imagine capturing the hustle and bustle of a cityscape. You can set your camera to take a shot every few seconds. You'll create a seamless time lapse that tells the story of an entire day in just a short clip. The effect is not only visually stunning, but also provides a unique perspective on time and movement in a busy urban environment. Interval timer shooting is also perfect for capturing the slow, almost imperceptible changes in living things like a flower blooming. By setting up your camera to shoot over several hours, you can document the entire process of a bud opening into a full bloom. When played back, the time lapse brings the flower to life in a way that's both fascinating and beautiful, revealing details and movements that we normally miss with the naked eye. The beauty of interval timer shooting lies in its ability to compress time, allowing you to see the world in a way that you've never seen it before. This feature opens up endless creative possibilities. Stay tuned because in the next segment, I'll dive into the specific settings and tips to help you make the most out of this powerful feature on your Nikon Z series camera. But first, if you're passionate about capturing stunning photos and want to stay updated with the latest in camera gear, shooting techniques, and editing tips, hit the subscribe button down below now and help me reach my next goal of getting to 5,000 subscribers. Join my community and take your photography skills to the next level with in-depth reviews and expert advice. Don't miss out and subscribe today. So let's now jump into a camera and take a look at the settings. First thing that we're going to do here is we're going to hit the menu button and we're going to go back up here to the photo shooting menu and I'm going to go down to interval timer shooting. So from there we're going to click the right button and this brings up the main menu here. So the very first button is the one that you'll actually touch whenever you're ready to start shooting. But first up let's take a look at the choose start day and time. So what this is going to do so this is going to give you um, two options here. You can either choose that the camera is going to start shooting now, meaning when you click start, it immediately starts shooting. Although I will say there is about a three second delay in there. So just be aware of that for your first shot. However, that's good though, because it'll mean your camera is stable when that first shot goes off. So that's what the now button means. The next one is where you can actually choose a date and time for this. So you can see here currently, if I were to use this, I'm saying this will start on August 18th at 10.10 10 p.m. So 
Um, that's what it would start at if I had it set here. So let's go back um, and I'm just going to leave this set to now. And let's go take a look at the next item, which is going to be the interval setting. So this is going to tell you within hours, minutes, and seconds, how much time is going to be taken in between each photo. So if I'm shooting on a three second interval, that means the camera is going to fire every three seconds. So keep that in mind as we go into the next setting, which is going to be the intervals times the shots per interval. So let's take a look at what I've got here. So let's, this is our, gonna be our number of intervals that we're gonna take. So this is saying that I would take 900 intervals and for each interval, it's gonna take one photo. So if I've got 900 intervals here and I've got a three second interval, that means every three seconds for 900 times, so for 1,800 seconds, this is gonna take photos every three seconds during that time. So now you can start to figure out how you've got to go and calculate. So let's say I've got an interval of three seconds and my exposure is going to be for two seconds in length. That means that in reality, I'm getting about one second between each photo. So I'm going to take a photo, it's going to expose for two seconds, then pause for one second for a total of three seconds, and that's going to give me my three second interval. So this is where it can get tricky. So let's think about it this way. If I'm taking photos of the stars and I want a two minute exposure, let's say to do a star trail. So I want to make sure that my interval here is longer than two minutes. So I'm probably going to want to do like two minutes and three seconds. Or uh, if you really want to cut it close, you could go to two minutes and one second to cut that time down as close as you can. But no matter what, you wanna make sure that you've got enough time there for the photo to be captured and then start your next photo. So this is that the camera is gonna to try to take a picture every two seconds. So if I were to set this at one minute, that means every other photo is basically gonna get skipped. Because what's gonna happen is I'm gonna fire the shutter, it's gonna run for a minute for a two minute exposure, hit one minute, it's gonna to try to fire again, but you're still taking that two minute exposure. So that one gets missed and you make it all the way to two minutes before it fires again for your second photo. So keep that in mind. I know it's a little tricky to think about in that way, uh, but that's how you've got to work that. So you could also do here though, let's go back to the two second example. So if I set my photo up here with an interval, let's say, of four seconds, but I do a shots per interval of two seconds. Now I'm taking two shots every time. So for that 900 setting that I've got for the number of intervals we're going to go through, we're going to take two photos every time. So that's going to bring us up to 1800 photos there. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, if you have any questions, please be sure to leave those down in the comments because it is kind of a tricky area, but once you understand it, you go out and play with it, it'll make a lot more sense. So let's take a look at the next setting. Uh, this is gonna be your exposure smoothing. So they don't really give you a lot of information on here, uh, but if you wanna leave this on, uh, what's gonna happen is it's gonna allow the camera to adjust exposure in order to match the previous shot. So there are times where you definitely could take advantage of this, but this can get tricky though, because if you've got large changes of brightness that occur between each photo, or from one photo to the next, you're gonna start getting in your time lapse where it looks like there's flickering. However, you can address this by shortening the exposures and shortening the time between photos. And from here, let's move on to the next setting for the interval timer shooting, which is gonna be your interval priority. So what the interval priority is gonna do is it's gonna give you that shots taken either the P or the A mode get taken at the chosen interval. Couple of notes here on this is that flash photography is going to be disabled, release priority is gonna be enabled, and if the auto ISO sensitivity is turned on, and the time chosen for the minimum shutter speed is longer than the interval time, then the time selected for the interval is going to take priority. However, if you leave this off, that's going to ensure that you get the correct exposure. The next setting I'm gonna almost always recommend to leave off, and that's gonna be to focus before each shot. And that's because you more than likely want to leave this off because you'll get your focus set up prior to starting your sequence of shooting 
and you want to ensure that your subject stays in focus throughout all of the photos. So the general rule here is shoot in manual focus and leave this setting to off. However, there may be times where you want to utilize it. The next thing to look at is the options setting in here. So if we go look at the options, there's two items that you can go ahead and turn on if you want it to. You can set the camera to use bracketing on every photo. So you just want to make sure that you leave enough time in your intervals for doing that. And then the next one is you can actually have it automatically create a time-lapse video once you finish shooting. So this would take your entire sequence of photos and at the end, it's gonna automatically in camera create a time-lapse video. So that's up to you if those are two items that you need turned on. Bracketing may be something you want, time-lapse video, you know, you're probably just gonna go create that in post-processing. If you wanna have a quickly assembled time-lapse for something, there's a way you can do that here. And of course, if you leave this to off, then neither of these settings will be utilized. And the final one here, this is gonna be your starting storage folder. So if you go in here, what this is going to do is you can say, hey, I want in my memory card a new folder created. And whenever you take your sequence, it's gonna go ahead and drop all of those images into a single folder. And if you want to here, you can also tell it to reset the file numbering. So that can be useful to have. On the ZF and the Z6 III, there's another option in the interval timer shooting settings that the other cameras don't have. And that's gonna be the electronic shutter option. When you have this on, it's gonna automatically set the shutter type to the electronic shutter and override any settings that you have on the D6 shutter type selection. Additionally, you can set the volume here for how much sound the electronic shutter makes when it's released. And the final option that you can set, and it's only available on these cameras shown here, is gonna be the silent photography option. And if you turn this on, what it'll do is it will silence your shutter whenever you take a photo. Interval timer shooting can produce some amazing results, but like any technique, it's easy to run into a few pitfalls if you're not careful. Be sure to check out this video where I cover five of the most common mistakes people make when using interval timer shooting and how to avoid them.